I'm Mark Feldhammer, President of Logic Data. I want to spend a few minutes with you today to talk about ERP disasters, the lack of success, and how to prevent that in your implementation. We've always found people approach these implementations and the acquisition of an ERP system with a little bit of trepidation because there's been news over the years of big failures. Uh, uh, the Mars Candy Company missed a whole Halloween shipment because their ERP system shut them down. Uh, Shane Diamond, the jewelers, uh, declared bankruptcy because of their ERP implementation. So you hear these scary tales about uh, people who've tried to do this. And if you're a smaller manufacturer, a, a family-run business, these can be frightening. Um, so we wanted to talk to you today a little bit about why do these things happen and how do you prevent this from happening? I've been involved in about 250 implementations of ERP over the last 30 plus years, and I've seen it all. Uh, I've seen the successes and the failures. And I'll tell you, it's been very interesting taking the same software into two different companies. This company is successful and this company fails. Well, certainly there's the issue up front of, well, maybe it was a bad fit for that second company and they shouldn't have gotten that product. And while that does happen, it's more a rarity than it is commonplace. Typically, well-made software will fit many businesses, especially our Sightline product. It's made to fit across the discrete manufacturing environment. And, and it's tailorable. We can make it work in different worlds. So why would it work in one place and it wouldn't work in another? Well, the very first and foremost reason we found is lack of management commitment to the implementation process. What do I mean by that? I mean, management has said, great, I bought the software. You guys go get it running and they kind of turn away and go back to business as normal. Well, it takes a village, if you will. It takes both us from Logic Data as your consultants and trainers and implementation partners, as well as people within the firm to commit to the software and really understand it, see how they're gonna use it best, learn it, and help us deploy it. It's like a four-year college education. You can't go to the university and say, how much to give me a four-year degree, and they'll quote you a fixed fee. The four-year degree requires both you participating and them participating. They have to provide the professors and the materials and the course rooms and the equipment, and you have to show up, and you have to study, and you have to figure out how to learn the material and be there and talk to the right people at the right time. It's similar with ERP. We can't walk in and guarantee that we'll have you, you know, up and running, and you can go about your business, and one day you'll come to your desk, and there's this beautiful ERP system running, and you just start using it. I wish it was the case, I really do, but it requires both of us working together side by side to figure out how that software should be used in your specific environment. The other thing I see happen is people bite off more than they can chew. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll give you a good example. Just recently I was talking to a customer who was interested in, in purchasing and deploying an expense management software package. Now these are packages that we sell that will allow your, your field employees to report their expenses, their hotel, their credit cards, and all of that, and have it roll into different jobs and projects and expense accounts within the accounting system and the project system, et cetera. Nice software, works great, takes some effort to employ the software and train everybody on how to use it, um, and, and the software has a price to it, right? So you start to look at your ROI. Is it worth investing in this software? Well, in this specific case, the customer had three employees in the field. Well, for only three people, it's no big deal to have them fill out some spreadsheets and have a clerk put the data into the accounting system manually. It's, just, it's you know 20 minutes a week, if even. Whereas the software package with costs and implementation and training and timing and everything else, it would be some tens of thousands of dollars potentially. So obviously, there's a trade-off there. My father used to say, your, your eyes are bigger than your stomach. Well, in that sense, it's like, I get, I want the software, I want this cool stuff, but what's truly the ROI? So at Logic Data, we believe in using computers for blood. You should really be able to get the value out of the software that you've, you're acquiring, and you should see that there will be an ROI. Hopefully, the software pays for itself within 12 months of going live. That's a great ROI, and that's what we want to have happen. I can't tell you the number of times we've talked people out of acquiring certain software modules just because, yeah, they're cool, but there's just not enough business benefit to handle the investment of getting the software up. 
So that's another reason why some of these bigger systems do fail. The other thing I see happening is it's too broad of an implementation. People need to recognize the implementation needs to be broken into specific scopes. I want to get this much done, then this much done, then this much done, as opposed to a big bang theory. I'm going to get everything set up and one day turn it on and my whole company end to end is going to be running on the new software. Well, that's a much bigger project than let's get our financials up first and then maybe inventory second and so on. So you always, from a project management perspective, want to limit the scope of the project to as small a piece as possible and have those happen one after another. That way you get fast wins. You get, oh, look, we started this implementation you know, three months ago and we already have our financials coming out and we're halfway done with inventory management. Rather than we started the implementation eight months ago and we hope we're gonna go live with everything within the next three months. Bigger chance of failure, things change, life happens. People come and go within your company. Your company may get acquired, you may acquire other companies. It may be an upturn or a downturn in business. So we need to get these things in when we have the opportunity before things change. So those are the main reasons we see for failures of software. I hope that helps.